Hey everyone, welcome back to another Hardware News Recap. This is probably one of the, the last news episodes we'll be filming for the year, but it's got some pretty fun items. For example, if you're a fan of internet service providers, which everybody is, uh, Charter, the company that operates Spectrum, just got slapped with a $174 million settlement. So that might be some good news for the end of the year to make you a bit happy. And if that's not enough, uh, NAND prices could be going down by about 10% in 2019, which will affect SSD prices. But there's not all good news. AMD is losing more talent. And uh, then RGB software has opened attack vectors for malware. It's suitable. Before that, this video is brought to you by us and the Gamers Nexus store. You can go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up one of our ceramic mugs, critically acclaimed mod mats, or educational video card teardown and PCB anatomy posters that teach the names and placements of all the key PCB components. Learn more at store.gamersnexus.net or click the link below. Let's start with the good news and then we'll move to the, the really good news, which is the charter fine or settlement. So the good news first, NAND prices. We've already seen sharp decline in SSD prices for the latter half of this year. It's been pretty good for the SSD market overall, despite the RAM market for most of the year being on a sharp incline for price. So SSDs, if you hadn't noticed, around Black Friday, they were 120, 150 bucks for a pretty decent one terabyte SSD, which up until this year was more or less impossible to find on something that was reliable. That's continuing though. DRAM exchange, which is one of the most reliable predictors for market prices, and they have actual cost pricing too, not just consumer pricing, but cost to manufacturers. DRAM Exchange predicts that prices could continue to decline in early 2019, and that's thanks to bit output being higher than anticipated uh, for 2018. Manufacturers have also seen a steady implementation of 64 layer yield, or they've seen their yields for 64 layer NAND increase, which is good. And there's been more sluggish demand than expected in other segments of the flash market, which in this instance benefits us because it drives down cost, whereas typically with a DRAM, you might see some, some kind of maybe artificial, uh, <laughs> artificial limitations of the supply. But this all has led to the market being an oversupply currently, and that oversupply is expected to intensify in first quarter 2019. So DRAM exchange expects that client SSD markets will fall by as much as 10%. And this is as demand grows uh, more sluggish over time, even among the increasing SSD adoption rate for desktop computers. DRAM Exchange also cites the ongoing China-US trade situation and the Intel CPU shortage, and then weak notebook shipments, along with slow sales of the new iPhone, all being key areas that are affecting the NAND pricing and output, leading to oversupply in pretty much all of those aforementioned sectors. So uh, down news here, if you're, if you're an AMD fan, AMD continues to lose talent. We've been covering this sort of AMD brain drain over the last couple weeks now, but for most of the year, AMD has been cycling in new people, specifically into the RTG team, the Radeon graphics group. And the CPU side's been doing well overall. Hasn't been too much turnover there, and Ryzen's obviously been a great change for AMD. But RTG's been struggling a bit, uh, for for talent in the last year. Just recently, AMD lost a former reviewer, uh, Damien Triolet, and lost him to Intel. They, uh, of last year around this time, lost Raja Kadori to Intel, Chris Hook to Intel, and so forth. This time, it's Mike Rayfield, but he's not going to Intel. So uh, Mike Rayfield announced his retirement from the company. Rayfield served as the senior vice president and general manager of RTG, Rayfield also headed up the group after Raja Kadori left for Intel and has been his replacement since. AMD released the following statement saying, Mike is retiring at the end of the year. He made the decision to spend more time with his family and pursue personal passions. David Wayne will be the interim lead for Radeon Technologies Group while we finalize search for a new business leader. And unlike others, it seems like Rayfield hasn't been poached by Intel, uh, although as a note, Tom's Hardware further reports that Rayfield is not actively seeking employment. So. This is more of an instance of just genuinely stepping out. Uh, but they're going to replace him at some point. We'll try and keep you updated on who that may be, because AMD needs to bring in some, some people on the GPU architecture side or the SVP side. Charter, this one's a, this is a good uplifting story. So Charter was slapped with a $174.2 million settlement by New York. And uh, sometime back, we reported on Charter, which operates Spectrum, 
formerly Time Warner Cable, being booted out of the state of New York for fraudulent activity. Uh, so fraudulent claims and poor customer service were cited in the initial lawsuit brought against the Charter by the state of New York and the Attorney General. And this is an ongoing lawsuit that was, well, it's originally, when we reported on this maybe a couple months ago, the story was, you're getting kicked out of New York. And that's evolved to, you're getting kicked out of New York uh, unless, as we understand it, you pay these fines and implement these service changes that are very significant. And if you haven't been paying attention to this one, Spectrum or Charter, or whatever, has agreed to pay $174.2 million in settlement. And it's a record for any ISP in terms of customer payouts, which is good. They can still probably afford more, but uh, it's a good first step. So the settlement will see Charter pay $75 to $150 each in refunds to customers, which, well, I guess you, you could take what you get at this point. And that's in addition to customers receiving free premium channels and streaming services for a limited time. Uh, Charter will also have to reframe the way they market their services, and this is the bigger deal here. So marketing, for example, needs to no longer be fraudulent and incorrect. It has to actually be based in reality. And also, uh, marketing services, now it, they, they are required to say that they're wired for the speeds that are wired and that wireless may be variable, of course, uh, and also have to perform routine speed tests as an audit and report them back. Uh, Attorney General Barbara D. Underwood had this to say in a statement about the lawsuit. Quote, not only is this the largest ever consumer payout by an internet service provider, returning tens of millions of dollars to New Yorkers who were ripped off and providing additional streaming and premium channels as restitution, but it also sets a new standard for how internet providers should fairly market their services. And Charter was penalized for a few things, but the chief among them was, quote, defrauding internet subscribers, and uh, they'll be paying out $62.5 million directly to customers as restitution, with the difference being split into mandated free services for customers. Uh, different kind of thoughts on that in a moment. Charter was under requirement also to bring higher speed internet to the state of New York, failed to deliver on that promise, uh, and then fraudulently marketed their services to promote things that were never provided. And that's where the lawsuit started. The attorney general stated, quote, fulfill your promises or pay the price, noting that this is a, quote, wake up call for ISPs. The restitution is listed on the AG's website for customers and is required for the following infractions. One, leasing an inadequate modem. Two, leasing an inadequate wireless router. Three, subscribing to a Time Warner cable legacy speed plan of 100 megabits per second or higher. And they have a couple of other infractions listed on that site as well. So if you want something for uh, to uplift your spirits, maybe you don't particularly like Time Warner cable or Spectrum, then I would encourage you to read the AG's posting because it'll, it'll probably uh, probably leave you a bit happy after that. So Spectrum is going to be paying out. Now we'll see what happens. One issue that um, that we kind of have with the free premium services is that some of them are pre free channels for a month, some are free channels for three months. Ultimately, what's going to happen is people are going to like that service and then they're going to subscribe to it. So probably, like usual, the ISP is going to end up in a better situation than where they started, despite having to pay millions of dollars in fines. But uh, it's a start, so we'll take it where we can get it and you can check the AG website for more on that. Next up, TSMC to build a facility for three nanometer semiconductor manufacturing. As Taiwan News reports, TSMC has been cleared through China's EPA to begin construction on a new facility that'll primarily focus on three nanometer fabrication. This is a $19 billion project that is slated to begin in 2022 at present, and the three nanometer fab will occupy the same vicinity as TSMC's uh, five nanometer site, and Currently, that is under construction. So they'll have a few projects going at once. The five nanometer site is expected to be up and running uh, in about a year at this point, maybe maybe a year and a half. And the, uh, the three nanometer site will be in 2022. So allegedly, in order to swing the Chinese EPA on the project, TSMC made a few concessions. And among those, TSMC vowed that the site will be renewable or more renewable than most in terms of energy. TSMC stated that the new fab will use 20% renewable energy and will use 50% recycled water for its silicon fabrication. And water is a, a pretty big cost in these fabrication facilities. Then finally, this one is, um, well, this is a bit of an I told you so moment about RGB. RGB software 
which we are, uh, of course, massive fans of, as you've seen over the years. That's, that's not true if you're new here. RGB software opening up attack vectors. If you remember Spectre and Meltdown and how profound those, uh, those vulnerabilities were, the same team that worked on discovering some of those, Google's Project Zero, turned its attention towards software for peripherals. It's a bit of a, bit of a step down in terms of achievements from the biggest known exploit ever to affect silicon, but it's still an important one because RGB is the uh, next biggest infectious disease that has affected the industry. So first reported by Google's Project Zero, there's a critical flaw in Logitech Options, the software is called, that allows hackers to gain remote access through the software by opening an unauthorized WebSocket port. And the vulnerability was reported to Logitech back in September as part of Google's security team's policies. They reveal these exploits to the companies first and then publicly later. Logitech hasn't, uh, well, they just implemented a fix, so they hadn't until now. And after the vulnerability was made public is when you saw that update. So if you're using that software, you should download the update because uh, otherwise you're at risk of a security vulnerability. Additionally, Secure Auth found vulnerabilities in seven drivers affecting ASUS and Gigabyte motherboard software. The vulnerabilities, according to Secure Auth and their research, will uh, allow t attackers to gain escalated permissions. They will allow them to take control of the system and run non-trusted code. And according to the report, communication with ASUS and Gigabyte has been less than fruitful, and many of the vulnerabilities remain unaddressed. Um, can't say we're surprised about that. But if you think about it, though, from a serious standpoint, RGB software, by and large, already has access to hardware. It's got permissions to do pretty much anything it wants to do in your system at a low level. And so that is a, a very smart vector to exploit as an attacker because it's probably not that secure. It's not like it's Windows or Intel. And it's, uh, it's probably widespread. And it has access to hardware. So key loggers would be good, a good example of something that might be a concern there. So anyway, if you have any of that software, annoy them on Twitter and see if maybe they'll fix it. But otherwise, uh, those are unaddressed. And Logitech has fixed its Logitech options. So that's good to see. One last news item we're shoving in here at last, last uh, minute here, because it's in the middle of working on the Titan RTX review when we got news that now at PC Perspective, which recently lost editor-in-chief and founder Ryan Trout to Intel, now it looks like Alan Malventano and Ken Addison are leaving PC Pro as well for Intel to work in Ryan's team. So just wanted to include that because PC Pro has been one of the, the leading technical publications in the space that has remained bound to primarily written articles, but they've had a podcast as well. And Alan is, has been one of the leading storage reviewers in the entire industry. As far as we're concerned, he was our primary go-to source for storage questions, SSDs or otherwise. Uh, Ken had taken over for Ryan after Ryan departed from PC Per a couple, about a month or two ago. So it's interesting. PC Per will be now placing Sebastian Peake as editor-in-chief. We're not familiar with Sebastian's work to the extent as the other folks who have left PC Per, but we wish him luck there. And we just wanted to point out that uh, it looks like Intel, <laughs> Intel's strategy of, uh, of media relations is just to hire the entire organization. But so yeah, Ryan, Alan, and Ken, best of luck to all of you in your new role at Intel, new roles at Intel, and Sebastian, best of luck to you at PC Per. And for anyone who might be starting to think, I'm not going anywhere, so don't worry about that. But uh, that's it for this one. So as always, you can go to store.gamersaccess.net to help us out directly. If you want to pick up something like the shirt I'm wearing, or you can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out there as well. Subscribe for more. We'll have Titan reviews coming up shortly. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.